Hello, hello. Come on in. God bless you. Getting ready for Bible study tonight. Wednesday night live Bible study. Amen. God bless you. God bless everyone. Hope you're able to get online. Hope you're able to see uh, the broadcast and uh, hopefully we'll be ready to study the word of God tonight. Amen. We're going to study. Hi, sis. How are you? Hi, Rita. <laughs> Hi, Tia. God bless you. I was unable to uh, tag people. I was going to tag people in this post this time, uh, but I did something wrong. So if you all know how to tag, then please tag for me. <laughs> Oh, just tag people to this live broadcast. Um, some some of our you know church members, of course. How are y'all doing? Oh, been a weird day having to work as well as prepare. Amen for Bible study, but we're grateful. Amen. We're grateful to be in the land of the living for one. Amen. So many people dying. Lord have mercy, but we definitely want to make sure that we are um, praying for what's taking place in our society right now. Amen. Uh, yes. Can we pray over some masks I am getting ready to give to 76 healthcare workers tomorrow? Absolutely, Rita. Wonderful, wonderful that you're doing that. And we will definitely pray for that. Amen. Amen. And uh, thank God for, hi, Elfrida, how are you? Uh, thank God for all of those who are coming online, um, who are uh, ready for Bible study. We're going to study to show ourselves approved, the workmen that need if not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Amen. Hi, Leona. Oh, miss you, sweetheart. Praying for Dennis, praying for him. God has got him in his hand. He's blessed. Amen. Amen. So we are going to continue to just uplift one another, love on one another, pray for one another. Amen. That everything will be all right. It's going to be all right. Amen. We just, we just thank and praise God. We give him the glory today. We give him the honor Hallelujah, God. We just worship you, Father. It's nothing wrong with praising God just a little bit. Amen. Praising him just a little bit. Amen. If we could just conjure up a praise, sometimes you got to do what you got to do. Amen. Just like David said, he had to encourage himself. Amen. I'm talking a lot already. <laughs> Let me let some people get online. Amen. We're ready for Bible study. I'm excited. As usual, if I can keep this camera going, when I'm excited, uh, as I usually am, amen, and I'm happy and excited to uh, that you all allow me to uh, be your teacher, amen, I'm, I'm, I'm gracious, grateful for that, amen, um, you could be doing so many other things, <laughs> oh, so I, I don't take that for um, granted. Amen. Hi. Hi, Elfrida. God bless you. God bless you. Hi, Kim. Good to see you. I'm looking forward to my special treat, <laughs> whatever it will be. Amen. Hope we can hang out um, soon. I'm hoping we can all just be together soon. Amen. That is the prayer. That is the prayer. Amen. There's so many people doing so many uh, special projects right now, um, helping other people, and it's so blessed. And we're going to continue to uh, pray for those who are out on the front lines uh, every day, you know, helping people, working, um, community service, and all of those different types of things that are uh, happening. We want to make sure that we are uplifting one another. Hi, Lanita. God bless you. Hi, Mike. Mike Rosen still. <laughs> that's, that's the cafe buddy, my cafe buddy. Amen. 
So yes, we are ready. We are getting ready for our Bible study tonight. And uh, you all let me know if you would prefer for me to broadcast from uh, from maybe ICC's page. You might do that. I think what I'm going to do is actually put a re uh, recast on the ICC page and then uh, we'll go from there. Amen. We'll see. I'm a little nervous about being on here, period. So I don't know about going uh, big. <laughs> Amen. All right. So uh, it's about 7.07. I'm going to go ahead and pray. Thank you all for who's getting on here. Please like, please share the broadcast, share, tag people in the broadcast so that they can also partake in our Bible study tonight. Amen. I'm just so um, grateful to God and I'm just so uh, elated in him and just so uh, just 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 the gratitude that I have for life. I, I don't know. I just have this uh, thing today. Just thank you for life, Lord. You know, thank you for life. Thank you that we're in the land of the living. I was looking at Facebook and it. I saw where New York was getting rid of um well, I shouldn't say get, getting rid of, but they were taking out bodies, basically. They were taking out bodies, and uh, they said that they had up to 600 uh, people who passed away in one day. And so, you know, we just have to be grateful in this season, amen? We have to be grateful just for life. Um, those people are passing away. There, uh, There's people who are losing their loved ones. There's people who are infected and uh, impacted by this disease disease, uh, yet we give God the praise. Amen. Yet we give God the praise. Amen. Uh, God bless you. Uh, Robert, God bless you. Good to see you, old classmate. Amen. So uh, we're going to go ahead and pray. And then we're going to dive into the word of God. Amen. And I'll be looking down at my notes from time to time. Uh, but please don't take that as uh, disrespect. Amen. We're going to um, really get some information. God is giving a lot to say tonight. Amen. So let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, oh God, we thank you, Lord. We bless you, Father. We honor you, God, and we give your name praise, Father. We honor you, Father God. We glorify you, Lord. We thank you, oh God, for an opportunity to come before you, Lord God, to worship you, Father, in the beauty of holiness and to inquire in your temple, oh Father. We know, God, that we're not in a meeting place right now, but yet we're grateful. Yet we are grateful for the opportunity to study your word. Lord, we will study and we will uh, gain understanding. Lord, open up the eyes of our understanding and enlighten us tonight. Father, I pray, oh God, that the word of God will fall on good ground. Father, oh God, even till the ground of our heart that we might receive of you, oh Father God. We thank you right now, Father, that you are with us. Father, you are, you know, never leave us or forsake us. We know that you are with us. You said where two or three are gathered together, you will be in the midst. And so God, we are calling for you to be in the midst today. Oh God, we're calling for you, Lord, to lead this Bible study, Father. Let no words come out of my mouth that are from my flesh, but only by the power of your spirit, send an anointing now. Hallelujah, God, that will make teaching easy. Hallelujah, God, and that will bring clarity and understanding to what we will say on tonight. And this is our prayer in Jesus. Jesus name we pray. Amen. 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 God bless you. Hi, Kirk. How are you? I'm going to have to uh, meet y'all and go fishing. Amen. So God, we thank you. Hallelujah, God, because we got some fishing to do more than just fish in the water. Amen. But we have fish out there that we need to be gathering up at this time and in this season. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Well, all right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, if you've been with me for the last, I think, three, I think it's been three uh, broadcasts um, since we've been out of the church, uh, I want to make sure that we are kind of caught up to speed. So the first thing that we talked about was God's provision. And if you recall, uh, the topic is really about um, 
in times like these, amen, in times like these, which is, comes from a song that uh, I heard sung as a child. And so in times like these, uh, the first thing we talked about was that we needed provision, amen, uh, that we can count on God's provision, that he sees and he knows and he's Jehovah Jireh and he can provide for us, amen. Then we talked about, Lord, someone might have to help me. We talked about expectation, amen. We talked about how we need to be anticipating participating and still expecting and still having hope in what our Father, our God, our Savior can do for us even in a season like this. Amen. And then um, last week, uh, that's probably the one I won't remember. Uh, last week, uh, we talked a little bit about how, um, how we really have to really just be saved. Amen. <laughs> I know that wasn't the topic, but we have to make sure that we understand um, what God is doing in this season. Amen. So tonight, I want to talk to you a little bit about uh, in times like these, we are still sticking with that. Amen. Because we are in perilous times. We're in the end times, but yet we want to know that uh, in times like these, we must remember the Passover. And God gave that to me so clearly, so clearly. Um, and I'll admittedly uh, let you know that, hey, I'm not one that really studied the Passover. I'm not really into the Jewish calendar and those kinds of things. And I'm definitely not a history buff. <laughs> I did terrible in history in school. Um, I, I'm much more of a designer and all of that uh, artsy person. But nevertheless, um, he had me to go over the Passover. And this is not going to be boring. I don't want you to be like, oh, Lord, we're talking about the Passover. No, this is going to be interesting. This is going to be good. Uh, so strap yourself together. Now, you know, if we were in class, I would tell you to get your Bible. I would tell you it can be on your phone, your tablet. It can be an actual Bible. Whatever it is, I want you to get your Bible, okay? Because we're going to study some of these uh, passages, and I really want you to follow along with me. Amen. All right. So um, we must remember the Passover. Now, we know that this is a very important week, right? We know that this is Holy Week. Okay, uh, which is a blessing to us, though it was a passion week for Christ. Amen. But it's a holy week and that holy week commenced on April 5th and it will go through until April the 11th. Right. OK, um, now on the 12th is actually Easter Resurrection Day. And we know we are excited to get to Resurrection Day to celebrate the our re risen Savior. Amen. God bless you, Gloria. Uh, thank you for joining us. So we want to celebrate our risen Savior, Savior on Easter, which is April the 12th. But when God showed me this, he said, okay, but the Passover, remember the Passover, because we, we're not going to forget Easter, right? We're going to remember that, but we don't want to forget the Passover and the significance of it. Amen. And so now, um, now the Gregorian calendar is where Easter falls um, in between, actually Easter falls in between a couple of dates, which I didn't know that, um, but we picked, we, whoever the we is, picked uh, Sunday, April the 12th, but it could have been anywhere from March the 22nd through April the 25th, okay? But it's usually after that first moon, okay? Now, first full moon. Um, now, but in the Jewish calendar, okay, in the Jewish calendar, we have the Passover, and the Passover actually begins tonight, sundown tonight, and it goes through April the 16th, which is next Thursday, or in other words, it lasts for seven days, okay? So we're talking about the Passover. Hi, Desiree. We're talking about the Passover, amen? And so now, one thing that I found that was interesting is that these two events don't always correspond, amen? They don't always coincide. Sometimes there are, uh, we have Passover, but we do not also have Easter or Holy Week at the same time. So I found that it's really a, 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 a coincidence. I don't think it's a coincidence. I think it's by divine uh, purpose that God has had these two things to coincide this year. 
Amen. God bless you, Sheila. Um, and so I think that it's significant um, because we know to everything there is a purpose and a time under heaven. Amen. We know that. But we also know, and maybe you've heard, that this was supposed to be the most difficult week for the coronavirus. Amen. Uh, he, uh, he, this is, this was reported by, uh, several faculties, I guess you could call them, um, the WHO organization, um, CDC, different ones have said that this was supposed to be one of those very, very difficult seasons. Um, this week in particular, uh, is where coronavirus is supposed to peak. Amen. And so I found that to be very interesting. Now, what we're going to talk about is um, one of those things where we're going to talk about how the Passover is significant for this week and for this time. Amen. And I saw on Facebook how someone said, well, this is a critical week for coronavirus. Um, but it also said, but it, it should be because this was a rough, re rough week for Christ also. Amen. And so guess what? He did. Christ had an awesome week, <laughs> an awesome week, meaning uh, extraordinary week um, on Holy Week. But we want to make sure that we are also um, going over what the significance of the Passover is. All right. So I'm going to read this verse to you. It comes from Exodus 12 and 42. It says, it is a night to be observed for the Lord for having brought them out of the land of Egypt. This night is for the Lord to be observed by all the sons of Israel throughout their generations. And as you know, um, the Jew Jewish people, they they cease not from celebrating this Passover, but it's something in Christianity where we have not always traditionally uh, paid attention to Passover. Amen. So I want you to get your Bibles. Let's go. Exodus 12. Um, we're going to look at that chapter. I'm going to skip through and highlight some verses. We definitely won't, of course, read the whole thing, um, but I'm going to highlight some verses. So Exodus 12. Exodus 12 is where we're going to be. Um, that's where you can find the scriptures about the Passover. And give me some likes. Give me some hearts. Make sure you're sharing. Make sure that, you're, uh, that you have your Bibles, that you're ready. Okay, so we're going to dive into this. Let's look at Exodus 12. All right. Um, now I'm going to skip down from uh, verses one through four, and I think I'm going to start actually with verse five. Amen. So I hope you're there. Likes and hearts. Good. Thank you. I see some. So I think that maybe we might be ready. All right. So in verse five, it says, your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year, Ye shall take it out from the sheep or from the goats, and ye shall keep it, keep it up until the 14th day of the same month. And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. Amen. And then in verse seven, it says, and they shall take the blood. Now, this is the part we know, right? And they should take the blood and strike it on the two posts. And on the upper door post of the houses wherein they shall eat it. Amen. So basically the command from the Lord was to take that lamb and, and slay it and use the blood to spread it on the door post. Now, someone tell me in the comments, why is that so significant? Why did they have to spread it on the, the door post? Amen. All right, so we're going to keep reading. I'm going to read verse verse 11, okay? So I read verses um, 5 through 7. Now I'm going to go to verse 11, all right? So verse 11, it says, And thus shall ye eat it with your loins girded, your shoes on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and ye shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. Amen. And so now I, 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 I'm understanding that we have moved from the instruction of the Lord. Amen. And now he's telling us uh, basically how to eat it. 
all right? He's telling us how, all right? So the way that he tells us how to eat it, again, in verse 11, it says, with your loins girded, but it also says, with shoes on your feet and your staff in your hand, and ye shall eat it in haste. Now, that should remind you of something. OK, because if you recall in the Bible, I believe it's in Luke and even in Matthew, it talks about how uh, Jesus sent the disciples out. Right. He sent them out to witness and to make other disciples. But he said, don't take your shoes. Don't take your purse. Don't take anything else with you. Amen. Now, so it may seem a little bit contradictory, but let me explain to you why he said this. OK, so he said, um, he said, now I want you to put your shoes on your feet this time, right? And if you know shoes, shoes in the Bible, actually, uh, uh, if you think about the verse that says, uh, we will put on um, the shoes of the gospel of peace, amen? Uh, so this will tell you that we basically are supposed to be putting on some things, right? All right, so in Luke, 22. Let's look at Luke 22 that corresponds with this verse. Hi, uh, First Lady Carlton. Nice to see you. God bless you. All right. So let's look at Luke 22. Amen. And on Luke 22, let's start at verse 35 through 36. And it says, and he shall, he said unto them, when I sent you without purse and script and shoes, lacked ye anything? Okay. It's a question. And they said, no, Lord, nothing. And verse 36, and it says, then said he unto them, but now he that hath a purse, let him take it. And likewise, his script or his wallet, scripts is really more like a wallet. Uh, and it says, and he that hath no sword, let him sell his garments and buy one. Okay. So, well, Jesus had sent them out to witness before, but now he's saying, get yourself together, get yourself ready. We have to make haste at this point. Amen. There's no more time to waste. And you'll hear, I've heard pastors say, listen, there's no more business as usual. There's no more church as usual. We've got to be able to shift. We've got to be able to move and change and be ready for the season that we're already in. Amen. It's no longer any more time to say, oh, well, maybe if, because at the same time that Jesus was about to be betrayed into the hands of his accusers. Amen. So he wanted the disciples to get ready. He wanted them to get ready to go. Hey, listen, I'm about to go out there. We got to get uh, girded up and we got to get ready. So let's talk about that. Okay. Because to make haste, that is an urgent call to get ready for immediate action. How many of us are ready for immediate action? See, it's no more contemplating. Amen. We already know that coronavirus is here. We already know that there is a plague in the land. We already know that there's something taking place. Whether we understand it or not, we know that it's happening. Praise the Lord. Amen. So there's no time to say, well, if they had a warned us, well, if they had a told us, well, who didn't know? Who should have said something? Why weren't we ready? We weren't ready. But that's the whole point. That's why Jesus gave this warning and said, hey, let's make haste. To, let's get ourselves together. All right. Um, so we know that we need to be prepared for an action. And, and like I said, he also said, he told them in that same verse, he said, gird up your loins. Amen. So to gird up your loins in that day meant to pick up your robe or whatever garment it was that you were had on and to tuck it into your belt, which is called, um, uh, which was uh, basically called girding up. Okay. Girding up. <laughs> All right. So the reason why they had to do that is because of course, this garment is very heavy. This garment is very long. Amen. So it can weigh you down. All right. So if you are carrying something, that you should not be carrying right now. You need to let go of that thing. You need to release it, praise the Lord, so that you can be ready, so that you can be on point. It's not time to be weighed down. Well, my wife won't go. Leave your wife. Well, my child is sick. Listen, 
pick them up, take them with you. Okay, because the Bible already told us in Matthew, woe unto the one who's pregnant in those days. Woe unto the one who is with child in those days. We're already having to go up to the rooftop. We're already having to see that there's wars and rumors of wars, that there's earthquakes in diverse places. So it's no, it's no more, uh, 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 I wonder if. No, this is the Lord. He already said that it would come. And so now we need to get, jump in. Amen? Amen. So gird up your loins or gird up your mind. Amen. It's also a familiar term. And that talks about spiritual preparation. Amen. Mental preparation. A lot of times what we get held up about is mental. Our minds. In our mind, we're still contemplating. We're still trying to grasp things and we, we can't move. Amen. But I'm reminded of the verse that says, forgetting those things which are behind. Uh, but then I press, I press towards the mark of the prize of the high calling, which is in who? Christ Jesus. Amen. So if we stay in Christ Jesus, then we can pick up and move. Amen. Amen. So, and so he told them to gird up their loins. Let's look at 1 Peter. 1 Peter 1. Okay. 1 Peter 1, 13 through 16. And forgive me. I know I might be going a little faster than I usually go, but God, God is trying to get us to make haste. So we got to make haste. See, if you're studying the word that you can flip the pages. <laughs> Amen. And get to the word of God quickly, because pretty soon you won't even be able to pick up your Bible and you're going to have to have that word in your heart to the point to where you can access it in your heart. Write the word on the tablet of your heart. Amen. Get ready. Get ready. Let's be ready. Amen. I, and that's not fussing. Amen. That's just the truth of the matter of where we are. I think we think because we're sitting still and we're sitting in our houses that there's nothing to do. Oh, no, there's much to do in this season. Amen. God has uh, uh, has put it upon us. Amen. He made he said, make your calling and your election sure. It's time to make your calling and election sure right now. Right now, God bless you, First Lady Sanders. Amen. God bless you. So it's time to make that calling and that election sure. Amen. Wherewith ye have been called. We have been called to what? Righteousness. Amen. Let me get back on this. Okay. First Peter, First Peter 1, 13 through 16. Hope you are there. Amen. It says, wherefore, gird up the loins of your what? Your minds. Be sober. <laughs> Peter taught in, in the book of Peter talks a lot about being sober, amen. Being watchful. Praise the Lord. So wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober and hope. Did we talk about hope before? Amen. Hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Amen. See, right now what's happening is people are getting a revelation of Jesus Christ. See, that's something that we should be uh, happy that we already have that revelation or so I hope. Right. But it said hope to the end. Amen. Hope to the end. If you read the scriptures, it talks about how we need to be able to endure to the end. It also talks about us being able to endure hardness as bold soldiers. Amen. We got to endure to the end. Remember tonight, we're remembering the Passover, but see people only remember, oh, uh, put blood over the door. But do you remember what else he said? He said, make haste. Amen. He said, gird up your loins. Amen. And it corresponds in scripture. Amen. So first Peter 1, 13 through 16, let's read number 14. It says, as obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lust in your ignorance or in your lack of knowledge. Amen. But verse 15, but as he which have called you is holy, he which have called you is holy. 
So be ye holy in all manner of conversation. Or in other words, conversation has to not only do with what you say out your mouth, but what you do as deeds unto the Lord. Amen. Amen. What are you doing every day? Is that as unto God? Amen. And it says, because it is written, verse 16, because it is written, be ye holy for I am holy. Amen. So it's not time to tap out. Amen. A lot of people are like, oh, this virus, oh, this catastrophe, oh, this pandemic. No, 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 no. We're not, we're not bowing out. Amen. It's time to gird up. It's time to get ready. It's time to go forth. It's time to be fortified in your spirit and strengthen your inner man to the point to where I, for God, I'll live and for God, I'll die. Amen. Amen. And let me tell you something. We talked about it last week, how you must speak for life. We have to speak forth life. I've gotten so many calls about people passing away, people not feeling good, people uh, getting sick. I've seen Facebook posts about nurses and doctors. And I had a friend of mine whose husband is a doctor. Uh, she put a post up there the other day where he was completely covered, completely covered. And I remember her saying, hey, I can see this much. I can still see this much. She basically was saying, uh, listen, you got to come home to us. You got to come home to your wife and your family. I need you to be completely covered. But see, that little piece was exposed. Just a little piece. <laughs> Just a little piece. Amen. We're going to talk about that little piece when it's exposed. Praise the Lord. So uh, I just wanted to basically let you know that according to Exodus, remember we're in Exodus 12. OK, according to Exodus, uh, the Passover meant that you were to put the blood on the doorpost. Hi, Tim. How are you? And you are supposed to gird up your loins and make haste. OK, there's a way that you eat this last supper, this last meal. Amen. So um, also uh, in Matthew 24 and 42, Matthew 24 and 42, it says, so always be ready. Or in other words, be ye also ready. Amen. Because you don't know the day your Lord will come. Nobody knows the day nor the hour, but we've got to be ready. Like the song used to say, we got to have our uh, lamps trimmed and burning. Amen. We got to have our oil so that we're ready. Amen. You ought to already have oil. If you don't, go get some now. Amen. Oh, God. He just said, save yourself from this untoward generation. Amen. And I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to preach. I'm not. I'm going to try to let the teacher prevail tonight. Amen. But save yourself. We concern ourselves with so much. When am I going to go back to work? When am I going to do that? What if we don't ever go back to work? How, do, have you ever thought about how it's actually going to be in the last days? And I'm not saying we're not. You know, our hope is that we will. OK, don't get me wrong. But what if we don't? What if we don't? What if this is it? What if this is how this is going to go down? <laughs> what if, because we didn't just now start hearing about wars and rumors of wars. We didn't just now start having earthquakes in diverse places, tornadoes and tsunamis, which I knew what a tsunami was until it happened a few years back. Well, this is not the, the beginning. See, the Bible in Matthew, it says this is the beginning of sorrows or birth pains. I talked about that last week. The beginning, then the tribulation will come. Amen. So how do we know where we really are? And we might even be getting there right now. Why are we so stressed to get back to what we thought was normalcy? How do you know that God is not doing a new thing? He said a new heaven and a new earth. Oh, Lord, I'm off my, I'm off my page. Listen, he is doing a new thing. 
But what you really want him to do is put within you a new heart and a new mind. Like it says in Ezekiel, amen? A new mind will help you to understand and be able to discern where we are right now. We need to be like the sons of Issachar who were able to discern the times and the seasons. See, some of you all might not be able to even get with me tonight. I've been trying to step you. I've been trying to be, but I'm trying to get you there. Amen. I'm trying to get you there. It, it's not time to say, oh, I can't wait to get back to my what? Your what? What can you not wait to get back? How good was it when you're in the house with your family? Anyhow, that's about all you can count on in this in this at this point. Lord, have mercy. Let me let me get off of that. I don't want y'all to be discouraged. Don't get discouraged. This is not about getting discouraged. Amen. I'm about to fall out my chair. <laughs> amen. It's not about getting discouraged. Amen. Because God is doing something. It's only about getting in tune with him and understand what he's doing right now. Amen. You can look at you can look at Facebook prophecy. You can look at, uh, uh, you know, Twitter prophecy and Instagram prophecy all you want to. But what is the spirit of the Lord saying to the church right now? OK, he does use his people. He does use his servants to speak. But you can't go off of that Facebook post. Amen. Oh, Lord. OK. Whew! Thank you. Holy Ghost. Yes, Lord. Listen, beloved. <laughs> it's now is the time. <laughs> this is the time. Amen. So as we remember the Passover in times like these, amen, we must lay aside every weight and the sin that so easily besets us. What is it that's throwing you off? What is it that you got to keep hanging on to? What is it that you can't let go of? They said some something to me. Now, now I'm hurt. Yeah, we all have gotten hurt. Believe me, promise you. <laughs> but it's time to lay it aside. Amen. Lay it aside. If it trips you up, get forgiveness down in your heart. Forgive the person and move. Move. You can't stay there anymore. Good God Almighty, that's not on my paper. Lord, have mercy. Lay aside the weight and the sin that does so easily beset us and let us run. <laughs> Look at the word of God. Let us run. But it said with patience. Well, wow. How do you run with patience? Mm. Somebody tell me in the comments. How do you run with patience? Amen. Amen. We're patiently waiting on God's return. We're pac patiently waiting on Jesus Christ to crack that sky. Amen. So we run with patience. Amen. We run this race knowing that we cannot accomplish anything. We can't accomplish anything on our own. We got to remember the Passover. Jesus was the one that, that uh, well, in that day, it was God. God was the one that passed over the houses. <laughs> Amen. Jesus wasn't on the scene yet in Exodus. Amen. Let me just clarify that. Praise the Lord. So sell your garment. That's what the Bible said. It said, sell your garment. Go get a purse. Go get your script. Right? Put on your shoes. Amen. Put them on. Let's get ready to go. <laughs> Lord have mercy. So we want to make sure we're ready to make haste. Amen. Let me continue reading in uh in Exodus. Let's go down to verse 12. Let's go down to verse 12. Amen. Amen. So verse 12 it says for I will pass through the land of Egypt this night and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, amen? And against all the gods, little g, gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment 
I am the Lord. That's verse 12. Amen. Verse 13 says, and the blood shall be for you for a token upon the houses where ye are. Okay. So the house that you're in, put the blood on that house. <laughs> and when I see the blood, I will pass over you. When I see the blood, I will pass over you. So if you, in case you've ever wondered, what is the significance of the blood? Why do we say, oh, the blood? Why do we say the blood of Jesus? The blood that uh, washes, the blood that cleanses. Listen, it's the blood. It's the blood that he saw. Amen. It's the blood that causes him to pass over. But to pass over what? Pass over our iniquities, pass over our transgressions, pass over our sins, pass over our endosecrecies, pass over the things that we are inadequate at, pass over the things that we neglect to do in God. He's passing it over. Amen. Forgetting those things. He said, I will throw it into the sea of forgetfulness. We're the ones that remember. We're the ones that bring it up and hold it over people's heads. <laughs> but God said, I will forget it and throw it into the sea of forgetfulness to remember it no more. Amen. So you don't have to remember that anymore, but you got to get rid of it first. You got to get rid of it first. You can't just be like, oh, mm, yeah, well, I just slept with, with her last night. But, you know, I, I ain't going to worry about it. I ain't going to think about it. No, you must repent. Repent means change. Repent means put it away. Don't do it anymore. Amen. Repent means knowing in your heart that it's that it's uh, uh, not that that Jesus is not um, what I want to say, that he's not pleased. Amen. That he's not pleased with that. Amen. And that's just an example. But I'm just saying that this is what it's talking about. Amen. We got to be able to run this race. We got to be able to make it to that city. Jerusalem, the city of Jerusalem, New Jerusalem, if it costs our life. It doesn't matter if it costs our life. Why? Because we're going to be in the arms of Jesus. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Somebody needs to hear that tonight. Somebody needs to remember that even if we don't make it in this life, we have eternal life in Christ Jesus. Amen. We're joint heirs with him. Amen. We're joint heirs with him. We have an, a, 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 an, a, an inheritance. Praise the Lord. Amen. God bless you, Sally. Love you. All right. So now. Um, it says, the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land in Egypt. Okay. Now, remember, Egypt was, was where they were being delivered out of. Okay. They were coming out of Egypt. Praise the Lord. All right. So it says, when I smite the land of Egypt. Okay. Why was he smiting the land of Egypt? Anybody want to put that in the comment? Why was he smiting the land of Egypt? What was happening at this time uh, during the Passover that made it so that God had to intervene? Anybody recall that? Well, I'm going to wait for a few comments, but we're going to see if you know. I know you know. So while we're waiting on that, what were the 10 plagues of, of Egypt? What were the 10 plagues? And, and again, why were there plagues? Okay. So since nobody trying to holler at me <laughs> with an answer, one of the plagues was what? Blood. Amen. Where I, I believe that was where the, it was, it was either the moon or the rivers that turned the blood. Somebody have to help me. Y'all supposed to be in your Bible studying too. Amen. All right. So uh, we had blood. We had frogs. Can you imagine frogs? Anyway, I got to keep going. Uh, lice or gnats was a plague, a plague of gnats <laughs> and or lice. Okay. Flies. Now, I hate a fly, but to be plagued with flies, Lord have mercy. Okay. Livestock, boils, hell, locusts, darkness, 
and death of the firstborn, which was the 10th plague. So what we're talking about with the Passover is the 10th plague. Amen. Now, another question. I, I think I've asked about two or three. Another question. Is coronavirus a plague? Y'all tell me what you think. Tell me what you think in the comments. Amen. All right. So I'm going to move on. I'm going to move on. Let's see. This is Bible study. So if you don't have the answers now, get the answer. Amen. We're studying. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I'm not going to tell you everything. Study. All right. So verse 14, verse 14, Exodus 12, 14. Uh-oh. Got a sad, a mean, an angry uh, one that time. Uh-oh. Because I didn't get an answer. <laughs> Amen. So um, verse 14, and this day shall be unto you for a memorial. So remember, I told you, God told me to remember the Passover. Okay. Verse 14 says, and this day shall be unto you for a memorial and ye shall keep it a feast to the Lord throughout your generations. Ye shall keep it a feast by an ordinance forever. Amen. And verse 15 says, Seven days shall ye eat unleavened bread. Even the first day ye shall put away leaven out of your houses. Amen. For whosoever eateth leavened bread from the first day until the seventh day, that soul shall be cut off from Israel. See, what you have to understand right now is happening with the Passover, which we should remember this week. Amen. Uh, what's happening right now is we're God is asking us to choose. Choose ye this day. See, if you observe the Passover, if you memorialize it, then that means that you want your soul to be with God. Amen. That means that you've chosen him. That means that you've uh, uh, accepted him as, as unto salvation. Amen. Amen. Oh, Sally said the angry was for the flies. I know that's right. <laughs> Amen. So we have to make sure that our soul is not cut off like the Bible says. Amen. Now we know this is Old Testament. We know that God is not trying to cut us off in the new dispensation. Amen. Of grace. He's given us grace. But how long must grace abound? When are we going to get ourselves together where we don't even need God's grace to be sufficient? Because it would already be in tune with him. We would already be on the Lord's side. If we're on the Lord's side, then he doesn't have to keep forgiving and excusing and, uh, you know, making amends for our sins. Amen. He did that with Jesus Christ on the cross. Amen. We know on that third day, he was risen. He is a risen savior. He is our risen king. Amen. And we're excited about that. But in the meantime, until we see him again, okay, until his second coming, which is, which is our hope, we need to make sure that we're constantly right with God. Amen. That we stay right with him. Amen. All right, so why was God so adamant about not eating leavened bread? Now, leavened bread means that it has yeast in it, okay? Um, when, of course, you know, those that bake, I don't bake, I cook, but I don't bake all that much. This is brownies, amen. <laughs> but that leavened bread is the one that will rise, right? Because it has the yeast in it, amen? Uh, I think Ms. Uh, Tanya Chubb gonna teach me how to bake, praise the Lord, <laughs> amen? And so um, with that yeast in it, okay, he said no yeast, okay? No, no, no yeast. Take the yeast out. Leavened bread is out. Only unleavened bread for this period of time during the Passover. And I will have you to know that I did not eat my bread today, which is very hard. I'm a bread person, but I'm observing the Passover. I'm remembering the Passover. In times like these, we must do what? Remember the Passover, amen? And I'm gonna try it for seven days. Somebody might have to help me <clears throat> in day three, but I'm gonna do it, amen? We can do this, we can do this, we can do this, amen? Only if you choose to, it's not, you know, um, but I'm hoping I'm making a good case. 
Amen. So in verse 15, Exodus 12, 15, I'm still in Exodus 12. Okay, I'm giving you other scriptures, but I'm still in Exodus 12. All right, in Exodus 12 and 15, let me read it again. It says, seven days shall ye eat unleavened bread. Even the first day ye shall put away leaven out of your houses. Okay, for whosoever eats le leavened bread from the first day until the seventh day. And remember, who, who remembers what those dates were? It starts tonight and it goes through Thursday of next week. Amen. Um, I believe the 16th. All right. That soul shall be cut off from, e uh, from Israel. So again, leaven also stand, it's the yeast, but that leaven will also represent the spread of sin, okay? If you look in the Bible, um, leaven was actually symbolic of impurity and corruption. Now, is there any impurity and corruption happening in this world right now? Not only the world, but in this nation of the United States, amen? Corruption everywhere. And we wonder, why are there plagues? Well, I'm not going to try to answer that for you, but we're studying the word of God, are we not? Can we not draw some conclusions as a result of what we're reading in the word of, the, uh, of God? If we were reading, we would know already. We don't even have to ask the question, amen? So anyway, <laughs> but it's also the leaven's ability to permeate a mass of dough many times its size. Amen. So when that, that leaven or that yeast gets into the, to the dough, it, it causes it to grow exponentially. Is that what happened with this virus? Did it grow exponentially? <laughs> Did a little leaven, leaven the whole lump, the whole lump of dough, is it permeated with sin? Amen. Is this world permeated with sin? Somebody tell me. Somebody answer the question. Amen. What is happening right now? Why are we in the state and the condition that we're in? Amen. We got to ask these questions. Right now, it's not time to be at home trying to get CNN to tell you. Amen. Open the word of God. Find out for yourself what is happening right now. Okay, I already talked about the fact that we need to make haste. Amen. I already talked about the fact that we need to gird up our loins. Hallelujah. Gird up your loins about with truth. That's in Ephesians 6. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Yes. Gird up your loins about with truth. What is the truth of the matter? Okay, what is really happening right now? <laughs> Help us, help us, help us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So that leaven, okay? I can read more of this verse, but I'm just gonna say basically between uh, verse 16 and 19, he's still talking about the leaven, saying that you should not have the leaven within there. So let's look at verse 19. Verse 19 says, seven days, shall there be no leaven found in your houses. For whosoever eateth that which is leaven, even that soul shall be cut off from the congregation of Israel, whether he be a stranger or born in the land. So that leaven again is symbolic of the corruption. Don't eat of corruption, amen? Don't partake of things that are, uh, are, are displeasing to God. Amen. That's what he's saying. He's saying, listen, there are some people who have, uh, have, have dabbled in some things that I am not uh, appreciative of. You know, I am uh, asking you and, 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 and we talk about, you know, uh, what is our reasonable service? What should we do? You know, we should be pleasing as unto God. How do we please God? By honoring his word, by doing what he says. The Bible says, if you love me, you'll do what? You will keep my commandments. That's what the Bible says. Amen? Amen. Amen. Good God. I'm trying my best to hold it together. 
and not run around this house. Amen. Ephesians 5. Oh, Lord. Thank you, Holy Ghost God. Thank you. Hallelujah. We have got to remember the Passover. We've got to remember it's not just the one thing. It's everything. We got to get ourselves together, get cleaned up, be holy. God is calling for a washing and a cleansing. Amen. We got to be washed. Hallelujah. In the power of his word. Hallelujah, Lord. His word will stand no matter if the heavens and the earth pass away. Oh, God. Hallelujah. His word shall stand. He is the word. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. He is the word and his word shall stand. How long? Forever. <laughs> Glory to God. We might not make it, but the word will make it. And guess what? He didn't send his word out to come back to him, boy. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, but it shall set whatever he set it out to do, it shall be fulfilled. Remembering the Passover is remembering the fulfillment of his word. Amen. Don't you want God to fulfill his word that as that plague passes by, that the blood is on the doorpost and it will not bring destruction upon God's people. But you have to declare yourself as belonging to God. Hallelujah. Choose ye this day who you will serve so that God can what? Pass over. God Almighty. Oh, he needs to pass over. He wants to pass over. But we got to give him a reason to. Amen. And some people think, oh, this is just symbolic. Oh, this is just, um, you know, something that happened in the Old Testament. Well, you take it the way you want to take it. Mm, glory to God. But as for me and my house, whoo, glory, I, <laughs> and we, which is the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, there's only other people in here, we going to serve the Lord. <laughs> Kate, Corona, listen, Rona ain't invited to this house. <laughs> Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Whew! Glory to God. Speak. I, listen, you type it in there. Type it in right now. Rona cannot come nigh this dwelling. Amen. Put it however you want to put it. He's not coming in this house. You better get somewhere. Ain't that, <laughs> isn't that how we say it? I don't care. I can be sound as ghetto if I want to. I got plenty of degrees that I can just revert back and just sound like I want to sound. Because it's the declaration. Mm, glory to God. Oh, God. It's the declaration of what shall be. I shall be Corona free in Jesus name. Type it if you want to. Type it if you believe it. I shall be corona free. My household shall be corona free. I, my children shall be corona free. Not just now, but unto the ultimate generations. Not having it. Amen? Not having it. Whew, glory to God. Let's look at Ephesians 5. I'm going to get off of here. Y'all, I don't know how I end up being so long, but God just pours out. And guess what? I'm not going to stop them. If you need to get off the line, do what you got to do. Amen. The broadcast, whatever, whatever this is. Amen. Do what you got to do. I'm not holding anybody. But God is speaking to us by the power of his spirit. Who glory to God. Glory to God. I'm trying not to let his, his uh, you know, I don't want to quench the spirit, but at the same time, whew, I don't want to get too overwhelmed. Let's go to Ephesians 5. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Go to Ephesians 5. Ephesians 5 and 7. It says, ye did run well. Who did hinder you that you should not obey the truth? Again, the truth. 
who has hindered you from obeying the truth? Amen. Verse eight says, this persuasion comes not of him that called you. See, remember in the Passover, you got to remember who called you. Amen. Amen. A little leaven leaveneth a whole lump. I said that earlier. Amen. Verse 10 says, I have confidence in you though, through the Lord, that ye will be none otherwise minded. Don't let any information that you're receiving right now cause you to be otherwise minded or even double minded in this season. Now is not the time to watch a video and take on that information as the truth. Only God's word is true. And the Bible says, let God be true. Let man be a lie and let God be true. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you for joining. <laughs> Amen. So listen, oh God, hallelujah. None otherwise minded, but he that troubleth you shall bear his judgment, whoever he be. So whoever causes you to go astray in this season, whoever causes you to uh, think something different than what the word of God says, the Bible says he shall bear his judgment. Amen. Don't forget in this season that God is coming back for a ready people and he is bringing judgment upon those of us who have not uh, basically been in him. Make sure, be very sure be very sure in times like these, we need an anchor. In times like these, we need a savior. Be very sure, be very sure that your anchor holds and grips the solid rock. Be sure, be sure, be sure, be sure. In other words, check. That's what I talked about last week. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Examine yourself. Check and see. It's, now it's time to check. Check. Make sure, make sure, make sure that your heart is right. The Bible says in, in Psalm 51, it says, create in me a clean heart. Renew the right spirit within me, Lord. Purge me with hyssop. See if I be who you called me to be. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Oh God, let me press on, let me press on. Oh God, thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. So in, in 1 Corinthians 5 and 6, verse uh, 6 through 8, it says, your glorifying is not good. Or in other words, your boasting. Hi, Dr. Felder. Uh, your boasting is not good. Know ye not that a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. That's the same as the other verse, right? Verse 7 says, purge out, therefore the old leaven. <laughs> Holy Ghost. Purge it out. Purge me with hyssop, Lord. And by the way, this hyssop, thank you, Holy Ghost. Hyssop is what they used to dip into the blood. Good God Almighty, Revelation. God Almighty. Hyssop is what they used to dip into the blood to spread it across the doorposts and the lentils. Amen? Thank you, God. Hyssop is used as an ex expectorant. An expectorant is what is used to help reduce the amount of mucus in your lungs and in your chest and in your nostrils. Amen. Isn't coronavirus causing people to have respiratory trouble? Well, is there a bomb in Gilead? Is there hyssop that we could use, amen, to free us from respiratory problems? Does God have a solution for every problem under heaven? Good God Almighty. Good God Almighty. That's revelation right there, y'all. My Lord, I'm not that good of a teacher. Amen? Thank you, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. As I thank him, 
He reveals. Amen. You can't be like the uh, the the ten um, that got healed and only one went back. No, you go back and you thank God. I thank God every time he gives me something. Every time, every time. I'm not that good. <laughs> Amen. It's the power of the Holy Ghost that teaches me so I can teach you. Praise the Lord. And there's many who can teach and surpass me. Oh, sha, hallelujah. Even some of you, hallelujah. But are we drinking um, uh, uh, milk or are we on meat yet? Amen. We got to eat the meat. The Bible says some of you should have been teaching. Oh, Lord. And I'm just grateful for my position in the church because if I think you could teach and the Holy Spirit confirm, guess what? Tanya, you will be teaching. Hmm. God bless you. <laughs> Pastor privilege. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So guess what? We need to understand that. Listen, in, in, in verse 20. Now, this is Exodus 12 and 20. I'm still in Exodus 12. Hi, Kim. This is Kim Wilson, my classmate. God bless you. Um, in Exodus 12 and 20, it says, ye shall eat nothing leavened in all your habitations sh shall ye eat unleavened bread. Now, why does he keep talking about this leaven? Verse 21, then Moses called for all the elders of Israel and said unto them, draw out and take you a lamb according to your families and kill for the Passover. 22, it says, and ye shall take a bunch of hyssop. Thank you, Holy. I knew it was in there. I knew I read that. I knew I studied it. Yes, I called you out. Amen. And dip it in the blood that is in the basin and strike the lintel and the two side posts with the blood that is in the basin. And none of you shall go out of the door of his house until morning. Amen. We so eager. We so eager. We got to get out. And is it are the reports not saying that every time you go out, you're uh, more susceptible to catching this virus? Amen. Amen. We so anxious. We got to get out. Oh, I need some more toilet paper. Do you? Do you need more? Or do you just want to get out the house? Now, don't get me wrong. I have cabin fever, too. I never thought I would, but I do. But we got to be wise, wise, wise in this season. Wise. Amen. They came during this week to betray Jesus and to capture him. And they took him into uh, a place where they flogged him and, 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 and they did all manner of evil to him, though he was a sweet little lamb. He was a sweet little lamb, the lamb of God that was slain for us. Amen. Don't try it this week. Don't try it this week. Be still, be still, be still and know that he is God. Be still, don't be tempted. Don't let somebody call you and say, girl, I need you to run by here. No, not this week, not this week. Amen, not this week. I, 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 Holy Ghost is just saying that. I didn't get on here to tell you that. And I usually, I would never even tell you anything, you know, but, but not this week, not this week. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Refrigerator might be getting a little low. Don't, don't worry about it this week. Don't worry about it. Not this week. Amen. Amen. Whew. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. He sends words of wisdom. Amen. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Oh, God. Hallelujah. So, listen, I'm going to bring this to a close because I want you to now I want you to start putting in your prayer request. Rita, I'm not going to forget yours. Amen. Put your prayer request in there. We're going to pray. We're going to pray. If you have a question, ask a question. If I can answer it, I will. If not, I'll study and I will get you an answer. Amen. 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 God, hallelujah. 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 Let's just worship God, the father, so that if he has something else to say, he can say it to us. Amen. Amen. He will even minister to you after this. Amen. Even after this, even after this, hallelujah, minister to us. Oh God, hallelujah. So I'm reminded of how in, um, in verse 23, he says that he will not suffer the destroyer to come upon you. Amen. 
to come upon your houses to smite you. Now I studied that word destroyer because in 1 Corinthians 10 and 10, it talks about do not grumble or complain. Write it down. I, I know I didn't give you a chance to get there. 1 Corinthians 10 and 10. It says do not grumble or in other words, do not complain. Do not complain. Don't complain as some of them did, meaning the children of Israel, as some of them did and were killed by the destroying angel. He just promised us that if we put the blood on the doorpost, then he will not suffer the destroyer to come. That's Exodus 12 and 23, right? Okay, but in 1 Corinthians 10 and 10, it says, don't complain as some of them did. I know you remember the children of Israel. I know you remember how they complained. Amen. Don't complain like they did. Oh, we want lentils. We want leeks. We want cucumbers. We want onions like we had in Egypt. Did you bring us out here to die? Why are we here? What are we doing here? No, no, no. It's not time. It's not time. It's not time to complain. Amen. It's not time to complain. Amen. We don't want the destroying angel. See, that blood on the doorpost is supposed to keep us, amen, from being destroyed. Because when you're destroyed, your lineage is destroyed. Amen. God is about inheritance. He's about leaving a legacy. Praise the Lord. And listen, I talked earlier about how we don't need to be too quick to try to return OK, let God show you what the new normal is going to be. Amen. Let him show you what you might need to cut off completely at this point in time. Amen. Because I'm reminded, let's look at numbers 21 and 7. Now, again, if you can't get there this quick, I, I got to keep moving. I didn't even mean to go this long. Pastor probably going to get me. He's going to say, now keep that down to an hour now. I can hear him. But y'all forgive me. Um, numbers 21 and 7, it says, therefore, the people came to Moses and said, we have sinned. For we have spoken against the Lord and against thee. We have spoken against the Lord and against you, Moses. Amen. Pray unto the Lord. Do what? Pray unto the Lord that he take away the serpents from us. Remember um, some of those plagues, right? In this case, the plague was serpents. Different situation in numbers, not Exodus, right? And Moses prayed for the people. Listen to me. Moses prayed for the people. Put your prayer request in there. Put your prayer request in there. Listen, Moses prayed for the people. The pastors are praying for the people. Amen. The prayer warriors are praying for the people. The prayer leaders are praying for the people. The people are praying for the people. Amen. We should be praying. Listen, this is a time of intercession. Amen. This is a time that we should be interceding for people. We need to be interceding for the essential workers. Amen. The healthcare workers, the nurses, the doctors. Amen. We need to be interceding for the people who go in and clean the hospital. Amen. They got to touch the stuff too. We need to be interceding for everyone. Amen. We have to be able you know, God is calling for intercessors in this season. It's time to pray. It's time to put your hands together, get on your knees, lay prostrate, take a prayer walk, do something, but pray. Amen. Pray for this epidemic. Pray for this pandemic. I've never in my life, and I know you haven't either, because I talked to my 94-year-old grandmother. She said she's never seen it, where the entire world was infected. Amen. That means the entire world has been leavened. The entire world is full of corruption. The entire world. But God, yea, even the Lord, our God, has come to cleanse, has come to resurrect Glory to God. He's come to bring forth, hallelujah, a new season. I can't wait for the new season. I can't wait for the new thing. 
hallelujah, that he will do. Have you not known? Have you not heard? Hallelujah, God, the things that God will do for us who obey him, those who serve him, those who do what he what he's asking for us to do. Amen. Amen. Have you not heard? Do you not know our everlasting father, our God reigns on the throne? He is our righteousness. We can't be righteous without him. Amen. Amen. So God is raising up intercessors right now who are going to cry out, who are going to cry out in this season. Amen. And listen to me. We need to know how to respond to this coronavirus. We need to know how to respond to the next thing that's coming. It's not, this is the beginning of sorrows. There's going to be more that comes. We don't know what it is, but that's what the Bible says. So how are we going to respond? Are we going to be like Pharaoh? Are we going to harden our hearts? Are we going to say, oh, God didn't do it. I knew he wasn't going to do it. Are we going to say, guess what? I know my God can do anything. <sighs> there is nothing too hard for the Lord. Amen. We've got to say that. Amen. I got to stop. I got to stop. But we've got to say in our heart. There's nothing, there's nothing too hard for him. There's nothing too hard. Do you not know, beloved, that God loves us? He wants to see us prosper. Thank you, Holy Ghost. He wants us, he, it says that I would that you would prosper and be in good health. I speak health, I speak health to anyone who's sick, any kind of sickness, not just coronavirus, but health to your body, health. Health, I speak health. He said, I want you to be in good health, <laughs> even as your soul prospers. He wants us to prosper. Prosper and be in good health, even as your soul prospers. Amen. 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 Yes, Lord. Yes, oh God. It is so. It is so. Yes, you can recover from that thing. Yes, you can. Change your mindset. Believe. That God can do it if thou can only believe. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. That's what he's doing. If you laying on your back for more than a day, he trying to get you to believe him. And just like the man in the Bible, this I, Lord, this Holy Ghost, just like the man in the Bible said, help my unbelief. That's what somebody's prayer needs to be. Help my unbelief. I want to believe you, Lord. I want to trust you, Lord. But what I see with my eyes right now, it's not looking good. Good God Almighty. But we need to believe God. God bless you, Gwen. That's my aunt. Love you so much. Listen, we got to believe God. And I will tell, listen, I got to tell my aunt, my uncle, my cousin, my sister, my niece, my nephew, my mama, my uh, stepdaddy, my uh, grandma. I got to tell everybody that no, it's God. It's God. It's God. I was separated for such a time as this just to come back to preach to you the gospel of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Sally, I had to leave Asheville High School, amen, and go off so I could be right with him and come back and tell you how good God is, amen? Amen, listen, we, 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 we're done, we're done. We're gonna close this out. I will continue next week, amen. If God says the same, I will continue next week. If you have prayer requests, I know I probably missed them. I know Rita had one. Listen, I'm praying for you. I'm praying for you, for he has raised up intercession in me. Amen. That's why I get, uh, you know, <clears throat> targeted so much. Amen. But that's okay, because I know what it is. Amen. We got to know. We got to know that God is for us. Who can be against us if God is for us? Amen. Listen, we're going to pray. Lord have mercy. 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 We all know about the um, verse, you know, in Second Chronicles seven, but 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 we rarely say 
Second Chronicles 7 and 15, where it says, mine eyes shall be open and my ears attent unto the prayer that is made in this house. For now I have chosen and sanctified this house that my name may be there forever and my eyes and my heart shall be there forever perpetually. Perpetually means forever, continuously. That's how long God wants to fellowship with us. Perpetually, forever, continuously. Listen, never think that God is not with you. He said he will never leave you or forsake you. Amen. So listen, we're going to pray. We're going to pray. Oh God, hallelujah. 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 Glory to your name, God. Glory to your name, God. Lord, I thank you right now, God. Lord, I praise you right now, God. Hallelujah. Just, just, just worship God. Again, if you need to get off, get off. Amen. Hallelujah. By the power and blood of Jesus, Lord, we're calling upon your name, God. You've heard us call out those things, Lord, that are uh, impoverished upon us at this time, Lord, we know, oh God, that there are people who are working, who should not be working, but have to work. Our essential workers, Lord, cover them with your blood, oh Father. Hallelujah. Yay, God. Cover them, Father. Touch them by the power of your spirit, oh Father. Be a bomb to them in this season, oh God. Is there a bomb in Gilead? Yes, we know that there is. We know you to be that bomb, Lord. We know you you to be the, uh, the the covering that we need. We know you to be the, the ointment that we need. We know you to be the cure for every disease. Lord, you said in your word that you heal all manner of diseases. Hallelujah. Not just coronavirus, but cancer you can heal. God, dysfunctions and disorders in the body you can heal. Hallelujah, God. And we know you can do it. We trust you, oh God, that you can do it, Father. Hallelujah, God. We ask that you touch, Lord God. Hallelujah, Lord, the schools and the school system. Father, hallelujah, God, those who are teachers and those who are educators, God. Hallelujah, the students, Father. Hallelujah, touch their minds and their hearts, God. Even those that are fearful. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Even those that are fearful. Students that I talk to on a daily basis that say we don't understand, Miss Felder. Hallelujah, God. Bless them, Lord. Keep them. Undergird them, Lord. Uphold them with your righteous, your righteous right hand. Lord, keep those babies. Oh, my God. Even the babies who have contracted this disease, Lord. God, touch them, God. Hallelujah. Heal them, Lord. You said by your stripes we are healed. Hallelujah, God. Because you went to the cross. Because during this holy week, this very week, Lord, you were scourged and you were uh, uh, you were bruised for our iniquities, oh God. The chastisement of our peace was upon you, oh Lord. And by your stripes, we are healed. Hallelujah, God. Even this very week is symbolic of what you did for us, oh God. And we shall remember, we shall not forget your loving kindness towards us. Hallelujah, God. We will not forget all that you have done. Thank you for being a risen savior. Hallelujah. Thank you that every word you spoke, you fulfilled it. Oh God, the Bible even says that you triumph, you triumphed over them by the cross. Because you rose on the cross, Lord, you conquered every devil in our lives, oh God. Hallelujah, Lord. We thank you for that overcoming power. Hallelujah, for you said that that same power works in us. Hallelujah, that same power works in us. So help us to wait, Lord. Help us to wait during this week. Help us to wait until we're endowed with more power. Power to witness and be uh, witnesses in all the uttermost parts of the earth. God, we thank you today. Lord, we thank you for your word that in times like these, we will not forget the Passover. Hallelujah. So much significance, God. 
And as we take communion, as we partake of those things, and even as some of us will prophetically put uh, oil and anoint our door frames, hallelujah, I pray that you will pass over. I pray that you will pass over our sins, pass over our unrighteousness. Forgive us, oh God, for those things that we've done that were not of you. Forgive us, oh God. Help us to repent of the corrupt, the corruption, the leaven that has leavened the whole lump, God. Help us to lay aside the weight and the sin that so easily besets us, oh Father. And help us to speak to somebody else and let them know how good you are. Hallelujah. Bless Rita as she takes a uh, mask over to the, the places where she's going. God, those who are sewing masks together, those who are giving gifts to other people, those who are checking on our elderly and our neighbors, those who are providing food and toilet paper for other people, bless them. Return unto them some 30, some 60, some 100 fold in this season, oh God. Let their work not go unrewarded by you, Lord. For they don't do it for vain glory. They don't do it to be seen. But thank you, God, for rewarding them for their hearts. Oh, God, their blessed hearts. Hallelujah. To serve and to care. Thank God for those who are caring for other people who are ill right now. Thank God for those, those ones, Lord. Bless them. Keep them. Oh, God. Hallelujah. Cover them with your blood. Let us not, any of us, under the sound of my voice, who are on here now or who will listen later, let none of us come down with anything, but yet let us be healed from all manner of disease, all manner of sickness, all manner of sin sickness as well, Lord. Hallelujah, God. Deliver us. Remove us from those atmospheres and those environments that are not like you, oh God. Help us, hallelujah, to put on those robes of righteousness and put off the former things, oh Lord. Help us, oh God, to put our eyes on you, the author and finisher of our faith, oh God. And so we thank you tonight. I could pray forever. I could pray forever. Hallelujah, Lord God. But I'm reminded of a song that says, I could sing of your love forever. Yes, the love, the unadulterated, unabiding, never ending love of you, Lord. Cover us, oh God. Let love cover a multitude of sin and faults, oh God. We love you tonight. Thank you for endowing us with your love. For it's your loving kindness that has kept us thus far. And it's your loving kindness that will see us through till the end. God, we love you tonight. God, <laughs> we love you. Thank you, Jesus, for going to that cross and dying for us. We love you for it. But most of all, God, we know you first loved us. <laughs> Glory to God. You did it for us. You did it for us because you loved us. Amen. 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 Oh, God, thank you for the words that have been spoken tonight. Let them resonate in our hearts and our, in our minds. Hallelujah, Lord. Don't let us forget the significance of this week, the significance of this week and the significance of the Passover. We love you, God. We bless you. We magnify you. We glorify you, Lord. You are an awesome God. You're wonderful. Thank you, oh God, that you are Lord of Lords, King of Kings, everlasting Father. My God, you're such a good, good Father. We love you. We magnify you, Lord. We glorify you. You're awesome. You're wonderful. Hallelujah, God. You're wonderful. And we exalt your name forever. We exalt your name forever, 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 forever. Amen. 
Go forth this week. Please remember the wisdom that God gave us, which is just, we're not doing too much this week. Amen? Not this week. Amen? Remember the Passover. Those of you who symbolically can put something over your doorpost, uh, your, use your anointing oil. Anoint your doors, anoint your doorpost, amen. Anoint the people in your houses, amen. Those of you who can remember the Passover by not eating leavened bread, do it. Do what you can do, amen, as much as it were possible. Do what you can do to remember. God doesn't want us to forget him in this season, amen. Remember him, amen. And let's do these things as unto the Lord. Not because I'm saying it. Let God show you what to do. Amen. I love you with the love of the Lord. I want you to be encouraged. I want you to be blessed. And if you have questions or comments, please leave them. I will go back and read and I will go back and pray for any prayer requests that I didn't see. Amen. Love you. God bless you. And let love cover a multitude of thoughts. Amen. And let the blood of God cover us until we see each other again. God bless you.